We're hanging with some of the original cast members today. You know him from America's Funniest Home Videos. But back then, he was Will's yuppie cousin, Carlton. Alfonso Rivera with us again. Thank you so much for joining us on the show again. And he is one of the most sought-after DJs. I had the honor of having him host my 50th birthday virtual party here on the show. He is the ultimate ride or die, DJ Jazzy Jeff. So good to have you back, both of you back. I'm so honored to have you back on the show. Let me tell you, I don't know if I would dress up like this for a lot of people. <laughs> but this show, what'd you say? <laughs> Only for us. Only for y'all. Only for y'all. This show holds such a special, I think, place in my heart. Place in people. Anybody who really loves good TV, good family TV that you can sit down and watch and enjoy. Alfonso, you were a child star. I mean, you've been in Hollywood, it seems, since day one, performing. How did you, you were Silver Spoons, the list goes on and on. How did you land this iconic, now iconic role that you didn't know was going to blow up the way it did? Of course, there's, there was no way of knowing how it would blow up. You know, I was, uh, I just celebrated my 40th anniversary working in the business, uh, wow. which is insane to me. Um, but, you know, I was, I'd kind of walked away from the business a little bit. And, and, uh, but I, when I came back, I had an opportunity to do two shows. And one was called A Different World, which was the spinoff uh, with Lisa Bonet um, and Kadeem Hardison. And then I got the opportunity to do uh, this pilot or presentation for a buddy of mine, Will, uh, called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And I had to actually make a choice as to which one I wanted to, to, to do. I mean, obviously, A Different World went on to be its own huge success. There you are standing at the door of two shows that were amazing. What made you pick the, did you pick the role of Carlton over the other? What, what happened there? Yes, I I, uh, I picked the role of Carlton because um, I I had hung out with Will and Jeff, uh, and, and Jeff knows that we laugh about the story all the time. Uh, but we, we went we went to Disneyland. We went to Disneyland and uh, we hung out at the um, Endless Summer Jam, and uh, and and so having spent time with them. I felt there was some sort of magic there. There was something special about them. Um, and, you know, whether he could act or whether he could deliver being an actor, nobody knew. But I felt like, wow, this is something that, if it works out, is going to blow up it's and be special. Be and I, just, I had to make the choice. One was already on the air for several seasons. This was a presentation that wasn't even, maybe not even a real pilot. Um, but something in my gut said, that Will was going to be special. I so, love that. Well, Jeff, so, Jeff, you were with, well, I remember seeing you guys stroll through, I think it was a party at Drexel. And there you mm -hmm. are, you're the biggest things in Philly at the time. You are growing into these, you know, hip hop stars, icons, but you have no world, no experience in Hollywood. You turned down the role. Why, why did you keep turning it down, as Will said, was it 10 times? I was actually terrified. I had no desire to do television. Um, <laughs> I remember when, when Will got the call to go out for the audition and he came back. We were actually on tour and he came back and said, you know, I got a TV show. And my brain didn't comprehend an actual TV show. I really thought that it was a friend with a video camera. <laughs> and then he went and shot the pilot. And I saw Alfonso, and I'm like, you got real people to do this show. Like, this is a real show. And he was like, hey, they want you to do it. And I was like, no, nope, no way. That's not me. I'm music. How did he convince and you? He, he basically said, they want you to do three episodes. If you do one and you like it, you got two to look forward to. And if you do one and you don't like it, you only have two more to do. And six years later. And guys, we can't talk about the reunion without, of course, um, recognizing that the great James Avery's not there. Alfonso, how, how was it? I mean, did you debate going through with the reunion knowing that the patriarch, the man who kept it together, would not be there? Um, well, no, there was never there was never a situation where I wouldn't have done it. Um, obviously, I think. You know, for us, it's, it's always harder knowing that James is not with us. It's harder getting together and missing um, his energy, his spirit, his love. Um, you know, he gave the best bear hugs you could ever imagine. And, <laughs> yes. um, 
you know, he he was just a gentle, beautiful giant, and uh, and he was not just a in a giant in in his stature. He was a giant uh, in terms of all that he did. Yeah. Um, you know, it for me sometimes doing something like this is about honoring him and and knowing that he's up there in actor heaven. Um, looking down and saying, "Wow, I was loved," yeah. and and yeah. he was loved by oh so many. Everybody. Um, not just not just in, in in on our set, but in the world. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, He's I, the father that a lot of kids don't have. You know, I, I you watch a lot of TV, and suddenly these people, these characters become like family. And what he represented, and the backbone of what he poured into the Banks family. Jeff, I've always wondered the running gag with him throwing you out of the house. I think we <laughs> all have friends that our parents can't stand. How did that become a bit? Of you always being thrown out of the house? Uh, you know, I think the very first episode uh, that I filmed, they wrote me getting kicked out of the house. And they laughed. You know, people enjoyed that so much that the next time that we sat at the table and I looked at the script, it called for me to get thrown out of the house again. <laughs> and they did it a second time. And then they did it a third time. <laughs> and it kind of became this thing that I was going to come in and I was going to say something that I shouldn't have said and I was going to get kicked out and it became a staple of the show. Awesome staple. Another staple of the show, of course, is one of our faves. She played the style icon, the ultimate valley girl, Hillary Banks, with us now, the awesome Karen <laughs> Parsons. It's so good to have you on with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks so much. <laughs> this is really a family <laughs> reunion. Karen, you said in the trailer, this was black excellence. And again, this is the power of TV. I don't think a character like Hillary had really existed before she, in television. I mean, she's got the style, she's rich, and she's not very humble, but she's black girl no. magic. <laughs> she's black girl magic in a different way, well before we were saying that. Right, right. No, I think that was the thing. You know, it's funny that my perspective on her has changed so much over time, because when we were actually doing the show, you know, I really saw her as this kind of um, shallow, um, myopic, her vision, everything was myopic. It was just what I need, what I need now. I want that. I want to do this, you know, and spoke the truth. Um, I've come to appreciate her a lot more, and I definitely appreciate <laughs> uh, the relationships and how it, how it, how we were able to see such diverse relationships on the show. And that, and part of that was actually was Hillary, too, seeing someone like that, uh, because I think people related to her. And I mean, I had a lot of girls come up to me and say, you know, I'm just like you, <laughs> you know. And so I was, <laughs> I was always like, oh, you know, you shouldn't tell anybody that. <laughs> but, but, it, but I think there was either you knew someone like that or you related to aspects of her or her whole whatever. But I think it was great to see that kind of character on the screen, and obviously it was a lot of fun. Well, I guess it was no secret or come as no secret. Her style was my influence. I, every time she, I was like, <laughs> okay, and it's 1980, I'm going to the Limited Express, I'm going to the mall, and I'm going to try to copy the plaid preppy <laughs> skirt. I'm trying to have that. Well, we're family, so I have to ask you, and I, I and it's, it's something that I struggle with, but since Will brought it up in the trailer, this show was drama-free. The cast was drama-free, except for the storyline of Aunt Viv, the character was changed in actresses. There's a reunion um, that's a part of this HBO Max 30-year reunion. How did it feel to have all of you back in that room, Karen? I think, I mean, this was, it was a surprise, it was a little bit of a surprise for me that it affected me as strongly as it did. Um, for me, I've, you know, I've seen Janet over time. We actually worked on a television show together. Um, but I knew that it would be a big deal having her back. I don't, I didn't realize though how, how, how much of a load it would feel like was lifted. I think just, mm. I, you know, I wasn't so directly involved in any conflict or anything, but there had been that conflict for so long hovering over the show, I think, and without realizing it kind of weighing things down. Definitely, it, it weighed me down more than I realized. Well, it made the show uh, real, because let's face it, this was a replica of a family. In every family, you do have that one relative that you're like, we're going to skip Christmas <laughs> seeing her. We're going to come back <laughs> next year.